After World War II, he wrote this book called The Foundation for Reconstruction. And in that book, he covers many, many things that he tells us and he comes down and basically summarizes that he believes that the Ten Commandments are being forgotten, that it is our moral code as a nation, and that our nation was built on that. And I had a quote I was going to share with you, but I'm going to save that for later. You know, the Ten Commandments are this, this uh, summary in the Old Testament. And you need to remember that in the Old Testament, it was the Israelites that were in covenant with Almighty God. And in the New Testament, it's a new covenant that we as the church uphold. And those Ten Commandments are very important. I'm going to be emphasizing that for the next several weeks and why we should keep them at the center of our lives. But, you know, summarizing things into a few words. Anybody remember the KISS principle? Yep. What's the KISS principle? Keep it simple. What? Stupid is the, that, that's, okay, we're going we're gonna to clean that up, all right? We're going to clean that up, and we're going we're gonna to say keep it simple saints, all right? So we're going to Christianize it a little bit. Keep it simple saints. <clears throat> the reason I bring that up is Einstein, as brilliant as he was, he believed that if you could take the core beliefs that you have and shrink that down to a handful of primary statements. And he said that's exactly what God did in the Ten Commandments. Now, it's so interesting that uh, some of you may remember the name of Robert uh, Fulgram, who a few years back wrote an essay that became very, very famous across our nation. It was called, Everything I Really Needed to Know I Learned in kindergarten. You remember what his list was of the things that he learned that were really important to life? He said, share everything, play fair, don't hit people, put things back where you found them. I really like that one. Clean up your own mess. How about this for a one word command? Flush. Remember that warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Well, he had others in that listing, but it, it really, uh, it, was, it was all over the country. You'd see it plastered places and posters and all the rest. Ernest Hemingway, one of the great American writers, said something that I want you to pay attention to. He started out as a cub reporter for the Kansas City newspaper, and he said that what the editor taught him there walked with him throughout his entire life as a writer. Listen to this. He said at the Kansas City Star, his editor as a cub reporter told him, use short sentences, avoid slang, speak plainly, clearly, shy away from adjectives. And Hemingway said later in his life, those were absolutely the best rules I ever learned about the business of writing. Isn't that something? That simplicity is what it comes back to? Well, as Einstein said, that God did for us with the Ten Commandments, and Jesus even does something beyond that, he tells us that out of those 613 commands that are in the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, that God came down and said, I'm going to make a short list. I'm going to summarize the entire law with 10 statements, the Decalogue, the 10 commandments that are found in Exodus chapter 20. Why are they so foundational to a culture like ours? with Judeo and Christian ethics and values. Why is it such a big deal? Why is it so fought against in our culture about this being public? So I wanna to talk to you about that. In those 613 commands, and the Jewish culture believed that there were, six, there were actually four, 248 bones in the human body, and they weren't far off, but pretty close. But they believed that there were that many positive commands. Someone took the time to summarize this, that there were 248 positive commands. Now, when I say positive, 
That means in the first five books of the Bible, these are things that thou shalt do. You should do this. Negative commands, if you do the math, 613 minus 248, you got your number, <clears throat> 365. God, for whatever reason, thought we needed that many things that he tells us thou shalt not do. So there's the summation. Now, here's what's amazing. God says, I'm going to put this down into 10 commandments. If you can obey these 10, you, can, you are literally fall, following the entire commandments that I have given you. It is a summation. But Jesus comes along and he said, well, I'm going to share all that God did. You know, God, the Father, made it down to 10. I'm going to take it down to 2. So in the book of Matthew chapter 22, it's repeated again in Mark chapter 12, uh, we have what we know as the great commandment, right? And the great commandment and the second that's like it says these words that the most important one Jesus answered is this, hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your what? With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. We're told down in verse 40 that if we will do this, we will achieve following the wrap up of all the commandments of God. And it's so important that we do that. Now in our mission statement here at church, we have taken the great commandment and the great commission, and we have made that the summation of what we're about as a church. Believing that we take worship, or we use the phrase loving God, loving people, mission, uh, or, or to be uh, doing ministry, uh, and that's out there on our wall. You'll see it in our publications, and we teach from this all the time. In fact, as a staff, we always ask the question, is what we're getting ready to start, new ministry, is where does it fit in our mission statement? Well, loving God, worship. Loving people, that's obviously ministry. And then we add the three word phrase from the great commandment, uh, living our mission or living your mission to make it personal. And that is our mission statement here at the, at the Oaks and has been literally since the second year I was here. Uh, almost six years ago now. So I want to tell you something about that. If you look at this statement, Jesus summarized it in just such a way. I want to take you down to what are the Ten Commandments really all about? What are they all about? Let me give you just a summation of that today, just a short message, and listen to this. Number one, the Ten Commandments are not about rules, they're about a relationship. Now, we read people and we, we listen to what they have to say about the Ten Commandments and there will be a lot of picture painting that the Ten Commandments, the laws of the Old Testament are negative. Well, we're not going to talk about that for just a second. Let me talk to you about they are rules, but in any relationship, aren't there rules? Sure there are. You remember when your mom and dad used to tell you, and this is when I was a kid, they would say, go out and play. And play until it's about dark. And then you get home. And you get home right away because we're going to eat. Now, in my neighborhood where we live, uh, where, where Kim and I uh, have a home, we, we have lots and lots and lots of kids. And one of the things that's been good about COVID is that you didn't see them before, but since COVID hit, there was a lot more of them out on the street having activity when they were out of school and all the rest. All of a sudden we start seeing kids on the street a lot more. Well, were your mom and dad, were they mean because they told you to go play and then they told you to be home and to come home for dinner? Listen, it's just different these days, but I was, I was part of that uh, group that was kind of raised that way. And uh, man, I would spend a lot of time outside playing each day, unless it was raining or bad weather or something. And uh, that's just the way it was. But were your parents meanies? Were they bad people because they had guidelines for you? 
No, it's part of the relationship of being a father and a mother with your children. You're going to have rules because of your relationship, right? And so it is in the old covenant with Israel where God's people, his first chosen people, Israel, were in covenant relationship. In the New Testament, we're in covenant relationship with God. And now out of a relationship of love, amen, I follow some guidelines about rules that God has set up for my good, amen? The rules that are there are about the relationship. They're not about the rules. Rules to follow rules just don't ever do hardly anybody any good. But rules because it's a relationship and it's got boundaries, those things are kind of amazing, aren't they? It helps us walk together. Watch this. In the relationship that we have with the Lord, listen to 1 John chapter 5. Look at verse 2 and 3. It says these words. This is how... We know we love the children of God by loving God and doing what? Carrying out his commands. This is love for God to obey his commands and his commands are not burdensome. I, I'm not overwhelmed by following God's commands. One of the things that happened to me on August 17th, 1975, I was 15 years old. I gave myself to Christ one of the things that was an extreme joy in my life was now doing the things of God. Now, because of my relationship of making Jesus Christ the Lord of my life, what happened? I now wanted to obey God. So I wanted to learn from his word about what he wants us to do. The Ten Commandments are so core and so basic to what God wants his children to do. Old Testament first, now New Testament, it, that has not changed. God wants us to live out these 10 great truths. Now, check it out. Second of all, the 10 commandments are not negative, but they actually happen to be positive. You say, well, I don't buy that. And I've had people tell me for years, boy, the 10 commandments and all those commands in the Old Testament, God, is God like a different God from the Old Testament to the New Testament? Well, no, he's not. We're seeing him lay down that no one can go through the law to go to God, can they? He's making it where the law, tell, God tells us in the book of Galatians, it's a schoolmaster, it's a teacher. Like you have a teacher at school. And the teacher's telling you, you can't go to God by following rules. It has to be a relationship. And these rules are not negative, they're positive because they're for your own good. Have you noticed that when you are with your parent and they have these guidelines and you go through these guidelines and you say, well, they did that and you have to get to a place of maturity before you get to this. They did that for my good and for me in relationship to them to follow these guidelines because they're interested in me being the right kind of person. They're interested in me following Jesus Christ. They're interested in me being the type of person that I should be in following the example set by Christ. They're modeling that to me. And the guidelines that they give me are not negative they're positive. Now, I want to share something with you. You remember the book of John <clears throat> where Jesus is talking and he says that to these Jews who had believed, Jesus said, this is in John chapter 8. You'll know this verse when I quote it here. He says, Jesus had, had said, if you hold to my te teachings, you are my what? Disciples. If you hold to my teachings, you are my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth does what? Sets you free. It's the truth that sets us free, isn't it? Now, when we come to the prodigal son, do you remember he had a definition that was incomplete? His definition of freedom was, give me my inheritance, and I'm going to go do what I want without you interfering in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to take my money and go, and I'm just going to do what I want the rest of my life. Now, that's called freedom too, right? 
But God the Father had had him in relationship like he did with his other son, and that was a freedom from, wasn't it? You understand the difference? You see, you got to get to a certain level of maturity that you under, understand that you have boundaries, you have things that are put there as restrictions, not for your harm, but for your good. And there's a freedom from things. And think about our culture, how it's gone just haywire with everything that you can name under the sun. Our, our culture has just gone haywire with, with alcohol and drugs and on and on the list goes with, with sex and with uh, gambling and with every type of addiction you can possibly imagine. We have gone crazy with that stuff. People have not observed the boundaries that were put there to help them walk in a relationship. And so you need to understand the Ten Commandments literally are not negative, but they actually are positive. Why are they positive? Because it tells you about the boundaries of a relationship. And we all have those, right? You know, I fell in love with Kimba Johnson Jude all those years ago, and she puts up with me for just a few more weeks. We will celebrate 42 years of marriage. So I am so thankful. Uh, and none of you know the burden that I've been to her. You just don't know. I promise you. I promise you it's been much easier for me than it has been for her. And I, I'm not trying to get her to amen, and she doesn't have to nod her head right now, but it's true. Uh, the burden has been more that way than the other. So I, I bring this up for this reason. We entered a, a love relationship and out of a love relationship, we started observing certain boundaries with each other. The Ten Commandments speak to those. Now watch this. The prodigal son just didn't get this. He went off, he got his money, got his inheritance, went off in riotous living, started eating what pigs eat. My goodness, what a horrible nightmare for a Jewish young man. And he starts eating what pigs are eating, and he's like, he comes to himself. The Bible says, he, praise God, we come to ourselves." right? See, wherever you've been, there's God's goodness and his forgiveness, and we come to ourselves. And when you come to yourself, you get another chance, don't you? And in coming to yourself, the young man realized, even the servants at my father's house have got it a whole lot better than I do. I am going to go back and tell my father I'm sorry. I'm going to tell him I'm not worthy to be your son. I'm going to tell him that I would just, if I can just come on as like a hired hand or a servant, I'll do that. And God the Father interrupts his speech and doesn't even let him finish the speech. As soon as he hears that he's sorry and he's coming back, done. And that's exactly how God treats us in our sin. He's willing to forgive us, isn't he? And that young man learned that there is more power in freedom from than freedom to. And young people, if there's anything we can share with you as, as adults, please, please learn that there is freedom from, and it's so much more precious than freedom to. Look at this third principle, and that is the, third, the Ten Commandments are not a burden, but they're a blessing. They're a blessing. They should make you happy, right? They really should, as he did with his first covenant people and with his second covenant people, the church. I want you to go to a covenant passage found in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want you to hear how the commands of God, all the commands of God, the entire law of God, the first five books of the Pentateuch, were interactive in the life of families. Watch this. He says in Deuteronomy 6, I read it a few weeks ago. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That sound familiar with how we started off today? These commands that I give you today are to be upon your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you are when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead, foreheads, <clears throat> write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. 
Now, for many, many years, we, when you pulled in our garage, there was this, this huge poster of the Ten Commandments right there. My thing then was our kids, we were raising our kids. I wanted them to constantly be reminded that when we pull into the garage, the first thing you see in our home are the Ten Commandments. Now, I, I, I like, we had other scriptures posted throughout the house, but I wanted that to be this foundation for them because I believe that's exactly what we're looking at is that they are a foundation for us in our life. I want you to hear a couple of things before we wrap up. The Ten Commandments have been under fire publicly and in the court system ever since back in the 60s and 70s, but it got severe in the 80s and 90s, and there were several decisions made just about 20 plus years ago. In 2002, there was the federal courthouse in Montgomery, Alabama. I lived there then. I pastored a church in Montgomery. And Judge Roy Moore, federal judge, fought and fought and fought for the Ten Commandments, which he had personally paid for this statue that was there in the federal courthouse for them to be there. And the ACLU won that case and it was removed. Now, that didn't just happen there, it happened all over our nation. In Kentucky in 2005, the Supreme Court ruled that they can no longer have these pictures of the Ten Commandments in prominent places in the, all the Kentucky courthouses in every county in their state. So in 2005, that was ruled out. Then you come to Texas and you would think, well, we won't put up with this in Texas. Well, in Austin, on our grounds, there is still a monument that, is, that has the Ten Commandments <clears throat> and <clears throat> the Supreme Court decided not to touch that. They did, however, <clears throat> go after the one that was in Bloomfield, New Mexico. And in 2018, they voted with the complaint of the ACL, ACLU that that would have to be removed. And it was removed from a public property to then being a statue on a private property, a monument statue. Uh, the one in Texas has still been under fire. And it's still there on the lawn today, but in this year's legislation, if you don't know about this, in this year, in April of 2023, the Senate brought that the Ten Commandments should be prominently posted in every classroom, in every public school, and every school across the state of Texas. And I say, Amen. But guess what? When the House got a hold of that last month, or I should say in May, they voted it down. And so right now, that's the standing. They voted on several other things, but that uh, is what's going on here in the state of Texas. Several politicians, local as well as state, uh, had plenty to say about that. But since that May 24, 2023, the bill has failed in the Senate House of Texas. Why in the world are the Ten Commandments so targeted? Why is this such a focus in our culture? Because it's the foundation of our Judeo and Christian values and ethics. It is a summation of who we are and what we believe. And there is a continued move, as we talked about, I mentioned, uh, Edwin Lutzer's book last week and uh, just how, how well he's documented that there is a Marxist movement in our culture to try to do away with the church and all things religious and be a secular state. There's no doubt about that. President James Madison said, we've stated our future on the ability to follow the Ten Commandments with all our heart. We really have. 
I want to leave you with something, and I'm going to just do this because I've got to just wind it down here and be brief today. But let me share this. Elton Trueblood, in his book, that same book I mentioned about the foundations for reconstruction, he had this poem in his book that I think sums up what we really need in our culture. He says, above all else, love God alone. Bow to neither wood nor stone. God's name refused to take in vain. My, how that's violated today. The Sabbath rest with care maintain. Respect your parents all your days. Hold sacred human life always. Be loyal to your chosen mate. Steal nothing, neither small nor great. Report with truth your neighbor's deed and rid your mind of selfish greed. Bam, drop the mic right there. It's what we need to do in our culture, isn't it? Why are the Ten Commandments such a focus to do away with them, to hide them? Why do I think they need to be out front in all of our lives? Because it's the core the summation of who we're supposed to be and the ethics and the values that we share and we live out. Father, bless this message. May it go forth in just a great way. Those that are online, we pray that you'll bless them. May they live out these truths as well. Lord, as some of our people are away, and Lord, there's lots of them away traveling this week, we just pray that you would bless them. Maybe they get a chance to watch online. We just pray that you'll bless that audience. But Father, may we respond to you in this place, in your house, right now. And we ask this in Jesus' name. To our online community, thank you for joining us.